Texas Governor Greg Abbott putting the blame squarely on the White House for the growing crisis at the southern border. The Biden administration's open border policies have created an open season for human traffickers, for drug smugglers, for cartels and gangs. This is Democratic Senator Joe Manchin floats the idea of a 90-day immigration moratorium after a visit to the border, saying it is past time to address immigration reform. My next guest also traveled to the southern border this week to see the crisis firsthand. Joining me now, Texas Congressman on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee and Border Security Caucus, Co-Chairman Brian Babin. Congressman, good morning. Good morning, Cheryl. Good to be with you. Good to be with you, too. You know, I think that video of those two little girls being thrown over the wall was so upsetting to so many Americans. And, and everyone, including the White House, has made comments. But this made me wonder what we're not seeing at the border. We have video of this. We have reporters going down to the border. Maria Bartiromo down at the border. That we can show. But what about what we can't show Americans? What you can't show Americans is the unbelievable humanitarian crisis that's going on down there. You got a glimpse of it uh, when those two little girls were tossed over a, a 14 foot high fence. Uh, and then the two uh, cartel coyotes run away in the background after tossing their shoes behind them. Uh, it, it, it is uh, seeing things like this uh, that I think should be opening the eyes of America. Uh, to what is happening down there. This isn't a challenge. It's, a, it's an all-out assault. Uh, it's open borders. It's an enabling of the cartels. Uh, it is Joe Biden's and the Democrat Party's open borders uh, policies. They did away with some great uh, policies of the Trump administration. He certainly had a crisis on his hands in 2019, uh, but he solved pretty much more than any pr presidency I've seen before. Uh, he solved those with uh, with programs like Remain in Mexico, uh, with uh, the Title 42 uh, uh, public health restrictions, especially during this pandemic. That's it was very effective, and. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate Joe Manchin coming down and taking a look at the at the problem. I appreciate uh, his moderate uh, position on it. But then when you start talking about pathway to citizenship, you're just turning the green light on again. That is the only thing that's going to do. We have to stop this border surge. We have to, uh, you know, regain control of it and, and wrest it out of the hands of the uh, of the drug cartels. It is an unmitigated disaster, humanitarian wise and national security, public health, you name it. Yeah, well, and these smugglers are, are obviously using these, these, these migrants, these children, as a diversion to get drugs in other places. And we should also mention that the Biden administration stopped building the wall immediately. I want to ask you about this new report about these stash houses in Texas. Um, it says since October, agents have increased bus on these stash houses by 400 percent compared to a year ago. And in particular, they're, they're pointing to some bus that happened in Laredo, Texas. What do you know about that? Well, uh, we uh, we know that just well, the dr the drug cartels are running human traffic through our border, which fills up our uh, our facilities, uh, formerly called cages, uh, when President Trump is in office, and these facilities are overrun. And then trying to take care, especially of thousands, we have, we have uh, probably sixteen thousand plus uh, uh, unaccompanied minors that uh, are, um, uh, you know, being, ha have to be cared for. And uh, so they pull these Border Patrol agents off the line, and so the, uh, the cartels run the drugs through. And that, this, is, this is where this is happening. I, I, we, we visited with the uh, Drug, Administra Drug Enforcement Administration, uh, the U.S. Coast Guard, and, and several other enforcement agencies, uh, state and federal. And I can tell you that drugs are pouring across our border during this time uh, of the border crisis. The yeah. cartels have exploited this to the max. There are drugs. They kill 70,000 plus Americans every single year. Uh, it is a war, and we absolutely are, are, are losing this war. And the American people need to be told the truth about how this is happening. Uh, and we need to reverse these policies of uh, President Biden and his administration. Mm -hmm. And let's get the vice president down there. We invited her to come uh, meet yeah. us at some points of our trip on our itinerary. We heard nothing, she nothing back. She
she hasn't, even though she's been put in charge, she hasn't come. If I was going to be the CEO of a company, the first place I'd go was the factory. That's just me. Uh, I want to move on to infrastructure uh, uh, with right. you. Yeah. So and all this spending that we're talking about here, the president unveiled that infrastructure plan on Wednesday. It's a $2 trillion package. They want to raise the corporate, tra uh, corporate tax rate to 28%. A 21% global minimum tax to help cover the cost of it. What is the response in Washington to these proposed tax hikes? They are, to use this word again, <laughs> overwhelming, in my opinion, and, and anti business. But, you know, being in the minority, what can Republicans do, Congressman? If they do this on reconciliation, uh, there's probably not a whole lot that we can do to stop it. Uh, but we will fight this till the cows come home. This is just another tax and spend boondoggle from the uh, uh, the Democrat Party. Uh, they talk big. They they call it names. It sound great. This is supposed to be an infrastructure bill. I, I I serve on the transportation and infrastructure committee. I'm all for infrastructure. I represent a, an enormous uh, uh, a district. So it's so key to the nation's energy uh, uh, supplies down in my district here in 36 of Texas. Uh, but this has very little to do with with infrastructure. There is some infrastructure uh, provisions or some uh, infrastructure uh, provisions in here. That, that I think would be good, but there is so much more that I believe are going to hinder and hurt the American consumer, the American taxpayer. Prices are going up. We've already seen uh, energy prices escalate, uh, you know, over the since Biden has gotten in. Uh, the the uh, lack of permitting on public lands, uh, the repression of uh, and, and continued, uh, you know, uh, plans to do away with 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 fossil fuels and to institute these uh, implement these uh, Green New Deal policies. They're going to kill Texas, Louisiana. Uh, Oklahoma, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, so North Dakota. There's so many states that rely on on uh, fossil fuel industry uh, for jobs and, and revenues. This will be a, a, a very bad thing for the American people in the long run. And I hope that they're as skeptical uh, as I am. And I'll tell you, a lot of my colleagues are as well. Yeah, well, we know that the fight is going to continue for months, Congressman. And you're right about it being a job killer in your district, in particular with the energy industry. Congressman Brian Babin. Congressman, it's great to have you on this morning. Always good, Cheryl. Thank you. Thank have a great day. You. Thank you, sir. You as well.